think about uh, you think about the scriptures, you think about the scriptures as a revelation of God's will to us. We had nothing to do with it. But it was granted to us. When we began to think, rethink, when we speak of being in Christ, this is a spiritual blessing. All spiritual blessings are in Christ. Yes. Since this is this is spiritual, we have to try to grasp the idea of the spirituality. Yes. Whereas when we think, we think in terms of the tangibles, the things we we see, the things we handle. Uh, I would not believe it. You know, the part of the world, I would not believe it unless I see it. But in spirituality, you see it and you believe it. That's right. Believe it is in the world. Believing, seeing is believing. But in spirituality, believing is seeing. That's right. And it's, it's not easy to grasp because of uh, our, mainly our upbringing. Uh, we had a religious, many of us had a religious upbringing. Religious upbringing is not a spiritual, not necessarily spiritual upbringing. And all of us, no doubt, have had that religious upbringing. But in the Bible, uh, we're dealing with the things that are revelation. This is revelation, and it means it's given to us. Uh, we didn't have anything to do with it. Either we receive what is given or reject it. It's built on, it's built on the whole, excuse me, whole is built on what is called faith. But uh, when you look at faith, the word itself is just a noun. Now it is an able person placing an idea. It doesn't have anything to do with action. But uh, faith must become action. So if, when it becomes action, the whole word in English changes. C E B E L I E B E L I E It becomes believe. That's the verb. Believe is the verb. Okay? So therefore, we talk about faith. Without this is the Bible. Without faith, Hebrews 11, 6. Without faith, listen carefully. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must watch, believe that he is, that he is a reward of them, the diligent seeker. So this is the action. You must believe. You can hear about God. Sorry, Get the ideas of God. That's all. Yeah. It is faith, name, an idea, person, place. What is it? Person, place. Person, place, or thing. Thing, person, idea, place, or thing. so forth. Right. And ideas in the world. Right. Ideas are the idea. Idea. Have mind. This is just an idea. Abstraction, meaning yeah, abstraction. But when we come to uh, God has given a revelation. We, right. we had to believe that He exists, and we don't. So, so Brother Matthew, yes, we we grow up in the world learning to believe what we see with yes. our eyes, That's right. which yes. is exactly backwards, yes. and that limits us our whole life. Whole life is limited. Yeah, you stand at the realm. Mm -hmm. I will not believe unless I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you only seeing is believing. That's, That's the world. Right. You're only dealing with what's around you in your little circle, in your little area. Right. Very narrow. What you can see. Right. Then in, in faith, faith is believing. When you believe, you'll see. It's not easy to grasp, but you have to, you have to keep working with it. Ephesians 2. And listen to the Bible. Let's read alternately. Verses 11 through... 22, we can read it all, alternately. Listen to the Apostle Paul, his writing this uh, letter to a group. It's called Ephesians, the city of Ephesus. But the principles that we get from this passage is a, a spiritual principles. Uh, it's, since it's a general epistle, not written to, uh, well, it's more general than, than the other epistles. Uh, he's dealing with 
you're dealing with faith issues. And when you look at Ephesians, it has to do with uh, the whole the whole of Ephesians is based on uh, the bottom of it, the bottom line is uh, is, is uh, believe it or not, it's love. L O V E, which is not it's really not understood. We talk about love, sweet love and all that. But uh, it's the biblical concept of love, you will see that it's not the abstract kind of love we talk about. I love you. Uh, we use I love you because <laughs> then we put this, I love you because of this, I love you because of that. I love you. <laughs> you know how you know how you hear the word, right? I love you because you're beautiful, whatever beautiful is, I love you because you know. But the Bible says, uh, what's, what's so wonderful about the vision, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Right. He loved us because, <laughs> all right, we were sinners. It's, usually we don't understand what sinners really did because, you know why? Because uh, we think we're all right, right. <laughs> even in our sins. And what the Bible points out is sin, uh, usually we think we're all right. But uh, uh, we have to grasp Try to grasp what the Bible is teaching us. That's a spiritual. Uh, and when you see the phrase in Christ, you can rest for sure that, it, that the spiritual blessings uh, uh, follow as a result. What's in Christ? All spiritual blessings. Matter, matter of fact, it says that in what chapter is that? Chapter 1. All spiritual blessings are where? Right. In Christ. So we have to grasp it. Spiritual blessings. All the other different from it. The material things that we see with our eyes, we handle with our senses. We... Verse 11. Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So we, without God in the world, we're atheists. That's what it means. Atheists means without God. But now, in Christ, notice, but now, in Christ Jesus, he who sometimes were far off and made nigh by the blood of Christ. Yes. For he is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. And came and preached peace to you which were afar off, and to them which were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Now you see, he talks about through the Spirit. Yeah. That's very important. You have to understand, we, uh, being a Christian, uh, being in uh, what is known as the Church of Christ, this is a spiritual entity at all. Mm -hmm. And spiritual entities are not easy to grasp because we are accustomed to, uh, we are accustomed to it with the thought, I have to, I have to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm. But you, spiritual blessings are, are given as a revelation. Brother, uh, Brother Matthew. I believe that faith is a gift from God because the more you say in the Word, the stronger your faith begins. Certainly. So that is a gift from God. That's God's gift to you, sure. for being in the Word. Mm -hmm. Say the Word, Lord. I like that word. 
think about what you're saying. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. It's Bible that we hold here. Oh, the revelation from God, right? Mm -hmm. That's a gift. Right. As a matter of fact, all spiritual blessings are gifts. Yes. Yes. You and I didn't do anything to deserve it. What did, you, what did you bring to God and give to God to earn your salvation? Say, now, Lord, here is my goodness. Good deeds, uh, give me my salvation. Who, who, who can raise your hand and say you did that? No one. So, so all spiritual blessings, uh, blessings are gifts from God. We call, we, it's another word we use for gifts. And that, and that right. is the word grace. That's what grace is. Grace is God continually giving. Listen to it. For God so loved the world that he do give what? Only See, here, listen. For God so loved the world that he only. Come on. For God so loved the world that he gave. gave. That's the stress. That's that right. he gave. Meaning another good. That he gave what? <laughs> His only, His only son. son. That he, whosoever, whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting It's a spiritual blessing. God gave his son. So Amen. Brother Matthews, yes. as we grow in grace, then we learn to um, uh, uh, have sympathy for, for our brothers and sisters that can't see because they're blinded uh, by their worldly whatever. Yes. And we show them love anyway, because yeah. we know, we recognize they're blind. Yeah. Yeah. Whole, the whole of the, of the, of the scripture, especially Ephesians, mm -hmm. is built on loving individuals. Mm -hmm. Loving the whole, whole passage. All right, now, mm -hmm. as citizens of the kingdom, it's another thing we need to. Uh, we hear a lot of talk about the church. That's all right. more emphasis on the church and the kingdom. And now it's the difference. We realize that. Alright, what is the difference? Uh, we I share with the Bible really say some another passage of scripture. We have you and I have been transferred or translated by from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear side. Now, to understand the church, the, uh, the term church means, literally means, ones who are called out. Okay? Now, you and I have been called out of the kingdom of darkness. Right. By virtue of the fact of being called out of the kingdom of darkness, we've been called into. Right. Called out of into. So we've been called out of the kingdom of darkness and we've been called into the kingdom of God's dear son. Right. Yes, sister. Should I? So that means the kingdom already existed before the church did. Absolutely. So the church is just a part of the kingdom. See, see, the the idea of the kingdom was in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. Before it's Ephesians. So, so the kingdom is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is your son. So when we hear the gospel preach, Jesus is the kingdom of Christ. He says, What? Come unto me, all ye that labor. And I have a lady, and I listen to grace. And I will give. See? I will give. That's grace. I will give. Grace is, the word of grace is giving. Right. And I will give you rest. What else did he say? He said, Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, or learn from me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest yes. to your souls. That's the promise. But see, uh, uh, 
we are, through baptism, we are baptized into Christ. Baptism is important. That's the spiritual blessing we have from God. So we are baptized into Christ. We enter into the kingdom of God's dear Son. That's amazing. Of course, Matthew, yes. all those scriptures you quoted came with condition. Yes. Like we have to do something first. That's right. And then I'll give. Right. That's what believing is. Doing something. <laughs> yes. We have to do something. But what we do is not only... <laughs> Not something we manufacture. No. Our works. Really the works of God. Mm -hmm. We respond. That's a good word. Yeah. We respond. Mm -hmm. We respond to the revelation of God. That's what we do. Yeah. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. How do you respond? You have to Action. Action. take my yoke upon you. Action. Learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your soul. That's where. It comes in. We respond mm -hmm. in doing. We respond in faith, really. And uh, we receive the blessings when we, re excuse me, when we respond. In. So we're in the kingdom. Now think about, think about the word kingdom. King, dominion. We're in the dominion of a king. This is why, this is what makes spiritual life different from worldly life. World's life, you know, we we go in our own strength, you know. We like to talk, look at we talk. I guess look at my muscles. I'm strong. <laughs> I'm strong, and we like to talk about all that stuff. Look at me. I'm strong. But in Christ, you can't talk about. I'm strong. If you're gonna say I'm strong, I'm strong. In here's how you do it. Here's how you say it. I can do all things through Christ that gives me the strength. That's different. That's a different testimony. I can do all things. I can flex my muscles. So, but who gave me the muscles? Where the strength came from. Oh, we. Yeah. Without praying for yourself, back when we are in the Word of God. <laughs> but when, the more we understand about the, the king and the kingdom, uh, we say, oh, look, look, it's grace upon grace upon grace upon grace. God is continually giving and he's giving and he's giving and he's giving. Mm -hmm. What can I do? Thank you, Lord. That's right. But if you don't get to that place, you have to get that place, you know. Don't learn that. You just, uh, we'll get there. Stuff <laughs> uh, coming down on you. Listen to the Apostle Joseph Jenner. He got to that place. He says, I am crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Yes. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That's right. That's the testimony. It's all together different. They're saying what I can do. I got the strength. No. No. I'm not having the strength unless it comes from God. So who gets the glory? Not me. God gets the glory. Mm -hmm. So in this lesson today, reclaiming our position in Christ. This, this is important. To understand spiritually we are in Christ. And all the, the blessing that we need are in Christ. Now, there's much to be done after, after we arise from the waters of baptism to walk, now listen, to walk in newness of life. It's amazing to me, and it's, if I understand it, I say, oh my, this is grace upon grace. Look how we start. First we hear the message of the gospel. And the gospel message, uh, what is it? What does the gospel message tell us? Well, the gospel message tells us uh, where we can, where we can truly find spiritual blessings. That's what the gospel tells us. The gospel tells us about salvation. Did you not know salvation is a spiritual blessing? Why is it a spiritual blessing? Because you and I did nothing to receive salvation. Salvation is a gift of God. So all, all we could do is respond to God. All right, what was the response? All right, salvation. It tells us salvation is where? In Christ. That's 2 Timothy 2.10. Listen, listen to Apostle Paul. I endure, listen to Paul, I endure all things for the elect's sake. 
Who are the elect? We are the elect. We are fellow believers. We are the elect. I, I, I can do all things for the elect, sake that they also might attain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. That's 2 Timothy 2.10. He says that salvation in Christ, it has what? Eternal glory. So salvation begins in time, but it doesn't end in time. It begins in time, but it goes on into what? Eternity. Eternity. That's, that's, that's the ultimate blessing that we are, are going to receive. That's eternal that's right. life. That's right. it, already, it has already begun. So look, point blank action. We hear the message of good news. God loves you. We, we respond to it by faith, right? Jesus said, preach this good news to every creature, right? He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, right? Well, well this, here's what is missed so often. And, that, and it cripples a person's spiritual life if it's missed. You begin with baptism sometime, or oh, make that an end in itself. I'm baptized, yes, you're okay now. But, but see, the Bible says, when you're baptized, you rise from the waters of baptism to walk. To walk in newness of life. Baptism is only the beginning of one's spiritual life. All right? But see, it has what, what happened. You're baptized to enter into those blessings. But after you get into those blessings, what you must do, you must walk by what? By faith. Yes, yes, moment by moment. I don't say daily, daily, moment by moment. You walk by faith. Right? Right? You don't walk by faith moment by moment. He said, then you begin to grumble and complain to hope for me. Very great. Usually you began to mumble and complain about others. Oh, what he did to me. Look what he did to me. What she did to me. Isn't that what Adam did? The woman you gave me. If you had given me that woman, Lord, I wouldn't be in the condition. Adam said, the serpent. And pass on down the generation, this serpent. Eve said, not Eve said the serpent. Adam said, the woman you gave me. Pass, what do you call that word? Passing the buck. I wouldn't be in the condition if it had not been for him. If it had not been for her, I wouldn't be in this condition. See? We blame other folks. But uh, it's very, it's very difficult for us use the word to take an introspection. You know, try to look into ourselves is very hard. But the Bible teaches us that, right? Exa listen to it. Examine yourselves. Whether you're in the faith. Except you be what? Reprobate. That's, that's a bit. Examine yourself. And yourselves is what you call a reflexive pronoun. Right? Yourselves. Examine yourselves. Not easy to do that. I think it's found in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. I believe she was still there. I don't remember everything. <laughs> Some things. You were out of the Other things. You know, point in education, I try to remember everything. You know what it is about education? Knowing where to find what you need when you need it. Right. That's why I got the library there, right? A whole lot of volumes, right? Volumes. Why do you got those volumes there? PDF. Huh? PDF now. Oh, P make it easy. <laughs> PDF. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I can get a definition, right? Portable document. Portable, Portable document format. Yes. Portable document PDF. Portable document. Go ahead and get it in. Got it. Yeah, you got it. You got it. But it's amazing, isn't it? Yes. But here's what we need to understand. After baptism, we walk in newness of life. Now, 
What you see in this passage of Scripture, the Apostle Paul is writing to mainly Gentiles. And he's telling us Gentiles that, that sometime in the past, we didn't even belong to God's economy. Only the Jews were God's chosen people. And the Jews knew it. We are God's chosen people. But what about the Gentiles? They don't belong. Mm -hmm. This is what you see in this passage. Listen, listen to it again. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? All right. Let's listen to it again. We Gentiles didn't even belong. So we'll, don't stick it out our chest and think we are all that. All right. Listen to what he says in verse 11 again. Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past. Time past. Notice that? Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hand. The Jews' badge of their relationship with God as his children was circumcision. Every male Jew, now listen, every male Jew had to be circumcised after the eighth eighth day of their birth. And what did that show? It showed that every male Jew was in God's economy. They were God's chosen people. And, and the circumcision showed that. But it was a circumcision, the Bible said, made by hands. What well, we have to get this now, made by hands. Every baby coming into the world the uh, boy, boy child and the Jew had to go through circumcision. Mm -hmm. All right? Made by hands. But listen to this spiritually. If that was the case, where was the ladies? Okay. See, it's something you got to think about. The Bible, the law says every male. Right. What about the ladies? Thank God for the revelation of Scripture. That both male and female can receive circumcision. Thank God for the gospel. Well, let's get that, that circumcision, okay? Turn with me to, to Colossians. This is very important. You see that? Turn with me to Colossians chapter 2. Right? Listen to it carefully. We got a circumcision made with hands. Now we come to the spirituality of the revelation. Listen to what Paul says. He says at, at Colossians 2, and verse 8. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and being deceit. After the tradition of men, not Excuse me, after tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. See that? For in him, what do we say about that phrase, in him? Spiritual blessing. But in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Verse 10 says, and ye are complete in him. I'm stressing that. In him, which is the head of all principality and power. Verse 11 together. In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hand. I'm stressing that. Without hand. I stressed it. What did I stress? Because you just read it. Circumcision made with what? With hands, right? Okay. Here's a circumcision without hand. All right. Listen to how he explains it. In the putting off the body of the sins of the flesh. By the circumcision of Christ. That's right. Got to get this. If we, we've got to preach the gospel and share it with others, you have to know this. Otherwise, it is talking a whole lot. Talk. All right? What about the circumcision of Christ? Watch what he says. All right? Verse 12. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him, through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. So we got to understand. Notice something there. 
you got the phrase, operation of God. Now this is going to help us so we will never boast again of, what, of ourselves, we boast on what Christ has done. That's right, that's the only boast. But that's not always the case. It's not always the case. It's not about human beings who like to boast on us of what we've done. That's flesh. But when we see it, when we really see it spiritually, you never boast again about what you've done. Only boast about what, what God has done. Now there's a phrase here. It says, it, it talks about the operation of God. You ever thought about that? Operation God. Very important. Now, I want, I want you to, this visual, I think about. Have you ever witnessed baptism in anybody? What do you see? You see someone going down in the water. What do you see at first? You hear a message preached, right? Yeah. You mm -hmm. listen to the invitation. You see a person gets up where he or she is. Move forward, right? That's what you see. You see uh, a testimony taken, right? Testimony is... Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? You answer, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You, you saw and you heard that, right? And then uh, they make ready for baptism, right? Male or female, right? Put on the baptismal garment. Next time you see that person, you see him going to the end, they're down into the baptistry, right? You see that, right? Right. You hear something too, don't you? Mm -hmm. You hear the splashing of the water, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. All right. The person says, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you you, you see that, right? Yes. You see the baptizer? You ever that person in the water? And you see him come back. What is it you didn't see? Operation. You didn't see what happened? No. Nope. The revelation says what? That you bear with him by baptism. Look, look at the script. You bear with him by baptism. <laughs> You're looking at me. What does the scripture say? What did you see it, y'all? Bear it with him, verse 12, in baptism. Wherein also ye are risen with him through faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. Right. Through faith of the operation of God. But the point is. You didn't see the operation. The point is operation of God. What's that? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? What is it? What is the operation? Yes, yeah, so you have to understand He's operation saved. of God. That's you're being saved. Give us the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> That's the word for operation of God. Amen. Right. You know what it is? Action. You have your <laughs> electronic, electronic operation of God. Mm -hmm. Energy, right? yeah. Operation of God. Uh, Look, what is the word operation of God? Energy. Huh? Energy. Thank you. It's the word where we get our word and it's called energy. E N E R G Y, right? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. That's where we got our word energy. Yeah. Do you observe any energy in this room? Only the results of the energy. That's what I. That's why I said, do you observe? No. <laughs> I didn't say, do you see it? <laughs> What's your word? Yeah. I said, do you observe energy in this room? What do you observe? Clock movement, lights on, right. air conditioning on. So somebody point to the electric. Yeah. That's electric energy, right? Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Now, Brother Dean, so you see the result of it. Mm -hmm. Build the air. Let's get, let's get that's the thing. We're we'll thinking all the time, right? I think we can we can see the results of God's work. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. what we have to think. Otherwise, Sometimes it, we don't see that either. <laughs> the results. <laughs> this is the word. The result. That's right. So it's God's operation, but we have to allow it to work within God's operation. So. 
God makes the rules for like man, and we have to solve the problem according to those rules. Thank you. So okay. we have to we have to work along with God's uh, pattern. Mm -hmm. That's that's called faith, right? right. Yeah, blindly, without question. That's right. Just and do faith, do what he says. Faith and believe. Yeah. I'm trying to get, you know, you have to try to help folks who don't see it. See it. That baptism is more than just flesh in the water. Mm -hmm. Baptism is God's act. Yes. It's what is called a circumcision made without hands. What God does in, his, in, the, in the energy, he operates on us. It's called operation, right? And we operate in God by His Spirit, you see. And what happens, what happens there, uh, verse 13, Paul says, mm -hmm. and you, being dead. being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have He quickened together with Him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Look at verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Yes. This is gospel. It's not anything you've done. Anything I've done. But it's what God has done. That's why it's called the operation of God. I boast. <laughs> Look what Christ has done. I'm so thankful for what God has done for me in Christ. That's why you're in Christ. Yes. I'm glad for what God has done for me in Christ. That's our testimony. It makes all the difference in the world. So Paul is saying, go back to Ephesians 2. Paul is saying, uh, we Gentiles, <laughs> we didn't have the circumcision that the Jews had. The Jews call the 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 Gentiles aren't circumcised. Mm -hmm. But they're only talking about what? A circumcision made by hands. With hands. That's right. Paul is saying, uh, us Gentiles, we have, a, we have a circumcision not made with hands. That's right. We have a circumcision that is, is totally the work of God. Yes. It is God who, who works through us and in us, and He takes out that old, mm -hmm. that old flesh. That, mm -hmm stones and he puts a, a new well he puts a God calls a new spirit within us. Stony heart you know? he puts a new spirit. And that is why in baptism what God does when we rise from the waters of baptism, if we don't realize that, now we have to realize this by faith. When we rise from the water, the graves of baptism, God not only give us the circumcision made with our hands, but he gives us a gift we never had. And he gives you and me the gift of, what is it called? He gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. S-P-I-R-I-T. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, keep in mind, we rise from the waters of baptism to walk in the of life. What is the command given to you and me after we rise to walk in the newness of life? You know what the command is? Continue. Walk in the Spirit. That's Galatians 5. Walk in the Spirit and you yeah, shall not, not fulfill, fulfill the lust of the flesh. Over here. And we <laughs> what makes it so interesting, we know the Bible spells out I mean, it spells it up. What the lust of the flesh is. You don't have to be guessing. That's right. Hey, now what is the lust of the flesh? What is it? I want to know what is the lust of the flesh. It spells it out. <laughs> right there. I mean, it spells it out clearly. You know why we don't see it? We don't study it. That's <laughs> true. So look at it. Yes. Brother Matthews, that's why um, we want to teach people and really make help them to understand and before they get baptized because if you get baptized and you're just doing it for someone and you really don't believe that operation is not going to help you because it's not going to really take place because you haven't believed you have to believe right in order for 
Christ first. I guess that's why that is what the ministers say. You have to believe. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Because if you don't, you tell You're right. me. Preach the gospel, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He that believe and is baptized shall be, shall be saved. So you got some, I've heard other ministers say things like, you know, you go down, a devil come up a wet devil. You I'll know, that. that's, yeah, I'll but that. I guess that's what they're under, what they're trying to say, if you don't really believe. I don't know what some minister's trying to say. Yeah, I heard that, yeah, she came up a wet <laughs> devil. Like, yeah, what does the Bible say? Believe. If you don't believe. Well, a lot of ministers don't teach the gospel, they teach, Teach something watered down. It sounds kind of like it. They mention Jesus here and there, and then people get baptized. So they haven't believed in the gospel. So now that's that's the problem. That was the problem, right? Yes. They, haven't believed, they haven't believed in the gospel. They believe in something. They, believed in the they believe in part of it. What is the bottom line of the gospel? Gospel. Think about it. Gospel is good news, information. Well, let me look at the word gospel. See how the word, how the words in English derives. Maybe we can derive some other language and words. Now, the word in the Greek New Testament for gospel. Guess what? I'm gonna. I'm going to sound it up. Euangelion. Translated gospel. But the gospel, this is a gospel. Doesn't it sound like something, kind of like, like a German tone? Any of y'all take German? Anybody been to Germany? Hear the Germans talk? I have a friend that speaks German. Huh? I have a friend that speaks German. How does it sound? It sounds forceful. 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 Give me a bad word in. He is now. Doom call. You ever heard that word? <laughs> you doom call. What does that mean? Okay. Time is. It's first call. Yeah. First is. Yeah. Doom call. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't the song, song good, does it? It's not. <laughs> Mercedes sound okay. Huh? I said Mercedes sounds okay. Mercedes sound okay. Right? <laughs> yeah. Why did I know what that was? Yeah, it's a German. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The good news, the bottom line of the good news is Christ. Mm -hmm. That's what the apostle said. We preach Christ and Him crucified. We preach that message to the Jew as well as to the Gentile. But what the gospel shows us is not man's doing. The gospel is God's doing. Is given to us by what God says. God says, I love you. Yeah. I put it like this sinners and all that whoever believes this good news of my sons dying for the whole world, he that believes and is baptized shall be. Yeah. You hear? This all, all these spiritual blessings are settled in Christ. The way we live is in Christ. We die in the Lord. We rise in the Lord. We live. Everything is in the Lord. It's either the Lord or us. That's right. When it gets to us, but we, we, we just mess it up. Mm -hmm. So we have to keep our mind on, on the gift of God after we have been raised from the waters of baptism. And that's why God gives you and me the Holy Spirit. And, he, and, he, and we are commanded, walk in the Spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. We need to study the lust of the flesh in Galatians 5, especially. Not only in Galatians 5, it's other way, but especially Galatians 5. It spells it out. He gives you the flesh of the Spirit, starts off, and then, well, 
him word for it. Then he says, he gets along. <laughs> he says, and such like, which means I didn't, I didn't cover everything. If I had to cover everything, I'd be used. If I had to cover everything, it'd be too late. But and such like, you figure it out. I'm giving you this and such like. As I've told you before, I, so I tell you now that, what is, what is it? They, they do such things shall shall not inherit kingdom. Oh God. See that? Kingdom of God. And then he comes, he says now, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, joy, peace, peace, honesty, kindness, kindness, meekness, against such there is no law. Well, when we learn to walk like that, wow! Church will really be a light to the world. And we, with that, that time, we just close. Uh, reclaiming, we got to reclaim our position in Christ. That's what makes us different. And we reclaim that, our position in Christ. Let's pray. Father, our God, we are so grateful for this day, for the revelation that you've given us, that all spiritual blessings and our circumcision is in your Son, Jesus Christ. He died for our sins, was raised uh, for our justification. Yeah. We declare that we are declared righteous to your son. We give you thanks always throughout the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you for your attention. Uh,